What's up everybody? Jack here, and it's good to do another video for this channel. I'm trying to come from the other end now, as you guys know. I used to make loads and loads of content, and I didn't really care about like the quality of individual pieces, because for me it was about changing my life and getting into the habit of making content. But that, once you get used to making content and you learn a lot, you do get to a point where you need to come from the other direction and focus individually on how to build value and really, really um, make things meaningful and useful. Okay, because if you if you don't make things useful to people, then you're going to struggle. You're going to copy ideas that other people are selling, and ultimately everything you try is going to be some outdated strategy that relies on duplicating someone else's content in an attempt to escape having to make it yourself. And really, whether it's your own product, your own service that you offer with your time, you need to be creating your own thing that you are selling if you want to find long-term success in being uh, earning money online or being self-employed, whatever way you want to swing it, it's really important. And for those of you who are interested in dropshipping, this is this is why I I I don't like dropshipping anymore. Um, dropshipping is so inherently unstable because, by definition, you're not really bringing value to your customers. Um, Yes, we can provide customers with experiences that are better than some alternatives, but we're making products more expensive and profiting off of them. They can always get what we get, right? And this is something that once I, once I kind of didn't have to work as much and was able to live in Nicaragua, I really started building my life around these kind of realities. How do I how do I create things myself? How do I get ahead and create trends that other people then copy? How do I think about my competition and put myself in a scenario where I have very little competition? These are the questions that I've been asking myself a lot over the years. And in this video, I'm going to explain everything that I've learned about this process, okay? And I'm just going to talk about this. I'm not going to edit this video very much. I'm just going to brain dump everything I've learned because I see on this YouTube channel, there's a big gap from when I transitioned into this kind of more methodical uh, way of doing things, the other extreme, so to speak. It can be hard for people to create their own thing, and I understand that. It's really hard to put yourself out there. Um, but really, if you can take anything away from this, it's that you have to understand value. And you always have to be creating, creating value. It doesn't matter what you're trying to do, whatever service you're trying to offer, or what product you're making. You, you need to know what people need, and build things that are valuable for those needs, okay? It's, this should be central to whatever you do, whatever products you make, whatever you want to offer. If building value is not central, whatever it is you do to earn money will ultimately be temporary. When you do things that build value, you open the doors to passive income. You can find yourself in situations where you can live a retired life at a very young age, or if you're struggling to retire now, there's ways for you to use your time now to build valuable products for other people and valuable services. And then that gets you more time in the future because you can earn passively from it, right? I'm just going to let you guys uh, enjoy the ambiance because uh, this is the only place I can record right now. There's birds and there's dogs. And there's probably neighbors talking too sometimes. And that's just life. You got what I'm saying though. That if you want to really succeed in what you're doing, if you want to earn money from, from this, you have to be building value in a way that other people aren't, okay? You can't be buying courses and doing what other people are doing and selling to you. That's how you enter the e-commerce world. 
That's how you go through the door. But that's not how you find a good life here. Okay? You, you need to be creating your own services and products. Any way that you can do that is more likely to lead to long-term success, okay? And you have to combine this with some form of physical relocation. Understand that you have attachments that are keeping you in the life that you have. You may think if you just had money, if you just had this, you would change, but it's parallel. It's a two-way street, so to speak. You may not believe me, but I'm telling you, it is. We're like goldfish. We grow to suit our environment. We grow to fill it. And you right now are a direct reflection of the environment you exist in. You can try and force yourself to change and will yourself, but understand that you are going against the flow by doing so. If you aren't happy with a product you're working on or a situation you're in, it's highly likely that you're going to be in a better spot if you change your environment, change the people you're around, change the places you are. And if you can't change these things, then your priority should be how can you have a chance to change these things? How can you expose yourself to living in a different place? If you've lived in the same place for 10, 15 years, you're going to struggle if you've been struggling even if you surpass things. And a lot of these factors are gonna be what boil into you being successful online. The next things I'm gonna talk about in this video are ways that you can manage the pains that you'll get from this kind of life. Because I'm happy to be very honest with you guys. Um, I'm talking about like an e-commerce life or a laptop life, right? Where you work from a laptop. When you're still in the working world and you're still in the rat race, it's very easy to idolize this life and think that when you're in this life, you just won't be you anymore. You're just gonna have things figured out. You're just gonna know what to do. And that, that part's not really true. What happens is your life gets more cleared of distractions when you are the one who's in control of whether you earn money or not. And that isn't always pleasant. You'll learn how you keep yourself stuck despite knowing exactly what you need to do. So not only do you need to learn what you need to do, you need to learn how to apply that despite the fact that you're actively going to get in your own way. If you think that all it takes is to just learn how to do something, and then boom, you're gonna do it, then you're gonna get disappointed and you're gonna give up. Changing this way and really living from a laptop or a computer is challenging. You will isolate yourself in your physical life. And if you fail to network properly and make meaningful connections with other people, this isolation can lead to extreme feelings of despair. And this is something that happens to a lot of people, okay? So I want to prepare you for these things because you can live a life where you're not controlled by these things and you're able to use your time effectively. But if you don't prepare properly, then when you have this time available, when you have this life that you want, you'll find that you are tormented by it because you'll see the things that you thought you would just change. You'll see some truths about yourself that will make you feel very uncomfortable. And it takes certain kinds of people to be willing to continuously be this aware. One of the unfortunate realities for you, as a person who will earn money from a computer, is that it's inherently bad for you to stay using a computer. And I'll explain why, but you will suffer because of the way you hold your body while using the laptop. 
And once you've been using a computer for multiple years, do not underestimate the extent of this physical suffering. I'm not even talking about any kind of emotional suffering. You can develop extreme headaches and problems because what's happening when you're using a computer a lot, if you're not aware of posture and how muscles work and how to stretch properly, then you're inevitably going to give yourself a lot of problems. And you're not going to know where these problems are coming from. You're going to feel physical discomfort, like an actual physical thing being wrong with you, whether that's headaches or back pain or these kind of problems. And you're then probably going to then drug yourself or do something because you don't realize that the literal way, the physical way you hold your body ultimately causes these problems. That may be a stretch, you, you don't believe me, but I'm telling you, this is a huge part of knowing how to use a computer and change your life effectively. You have to be able to manage the real risks and dangers of extensive computer use, both to your physical, emotional, and mental health, okay? And that's what I'm trying to flush out in this video, give you guys some relevant stuff, because I know if you guys watched all my dropshipping content, then you are interested in this kind of thing. You know, you want to free yourself from wherever you are. You want to have more financial freedom. And I want that for you too. But I want to be able to give you guys this because by preparing for these things, these are things you can do now. You can ask yourself how you feel. You can focus on your mental health. You can value your feelings and emotions as important. And when you start listening to your body, you're going to realize that when you're in physical pain, your, your perspective is skewed. You will not make sound business decisions. You will not be as motivated. You will not be as likely to network and make connections with other people who share relevant interests to you. And this all in the long run makes you not succeed, okay? So it's a correlation. You reduce the amount of physical discomfort, not discomfort, sorry, physical suffering that you're experiencing, and you will then be more of what you want to be, okay? So to gloss over this physical part, to gloss over your muscles and how holding your body affects our mind tomorrow, a week from now, is very ignorant. That's like cutting with a knife without ever thinking about the fact that it could cut you, right? You have to be aware of that so you can use the knife properly. And it's the same way with a computer, okay? These are all things, if you have children, if you yourself use computer, um, these are things that you really need to understand. And a lot of us aren't taught these things, right? I'm going to flush out more why this physical thing, how we hold ourselves, is so fundamentally important. It's the root cause of why a lot of people experience the states that give them the perspective that make them give up, okay? So you can focus on the circumstance all you want, but that isn't what leads a person to give up. What leads people to give up is the root cause, the triggers. And what we usually focus on are all the ripples. I'm trying to help you focus on the root cause of why you might not get what you're trying to get out of this self-employed life, okay? And it is physical pain. You need to be very aware of yourself, your body, and your needs. The reason that how you hold yourself matters so much is because of your neck and shoulders. Imagine that this is my back. This region, all the way to here, everything here, right, like from my imaginary boobs all the way up here to the back of my head, any muscle problem in that whole region will lead to headaches and back pain. There's something called referred pain where 
a trigger point develops, which is a physical knot in your back. It's a muscle knot, right? And it's a real thing. You can massage it and ease it and stretch and get rid of them. They're real. You can touch them. You can see images of them. They are physical things, real things you can look at. And believe it or not, those physical things, those knots in your muscles are the literal obstacles. They are root cause obstacles of why you fail to do whatever it is that you actually want to do. We are all too distracted. You are too distracted. By reducing the amount of distractions you experience, you will do more of what you really are, whoever you are, whatever it is you're really here to accomplish, okay? These knots, these physical knots, occur anywhere in your neck. And you watching this, if you're watching me 16 minutes into this video, you have these knots. I know just statistically, you are able to watch a video for this long. That means that you probably spend time in a state causing muscle problems in your upper shoulder. And if you take your, if you don't believe me, take your hand right now and go to the very top of your shoulder. So here's where my neck curves, right? And there's like the corner of my shoulder right here. And we're going to go to the middle and then the very top, okay? And then push down in this area. And then if that doesn't feel weird to you, try and find the muscle behind it. See if you feel any kind of soreness in this area. You see where I'm going here? These areas get really messed up by even just a couple hours of using the computer, especially if you aren't in the right posture. You have to train yourself to use proper posture. Otherwise, you will suffer. And these headaches, these muscle problems, these tensions will result in you seeking comfort. You will distract yourself. You will do other things and get away from what you're actually trying to do. You will do less of what you're trying to do. So it's very important that you prioritize your physical body. You have almost by guarantee at least 30 or 40 trigger points in your body right now. You may not think they're there, but if you were to run for an hour or two, be really active, what you're gonna notice is your muscles get sore, right? So if you then shut your eyes and feel your body, you'll actually be able to tell exactly where all of your latent trigger points are because you fatigued your whole body enough that you activated your trigger points. So all you have to do at that point to find them is find sore areas of your muscles after you've exercised them and put pressure on them. And you're going to notice that there's areas that are a lot more intense, especially if you dig into the layers of muscle underneath the top layer. You can feel them, they're there. You've just blocked your ability to know. You've forgotten, and this is a root cause problem that trickles down the line, okay? It's very, very important. And that's pretty much it. If you want to avoid this kind of stuff, it's really simple, you just sit cross-legged and you stretch your arms a lot. You can't use the computer for more than an hour without walking around for at least five minutes. If you use the computer for extensive amounts of time and you do not take breaks, you will develop problems such as fatigue, strain, stress, headaches, depression, okay? These things all are directly influenced by excessive computer use. And the irony is a lot of people think it's because of the screen light, but really it's not. It's because of the psychological effect and the changes that these have on the way that you live, how you hold your body, how you react to the pain that you feel. So I want you guys to be prepared for this, okay? And if you want this kind of content, then let me know. I just kind of talked about the physical pain that computers give you and make sure you're aware of these. I, I know I didn't talk about how much to resolve them really, and that's because you'll naturally learn how to resolve these yourself. Once you realize 
that you have trigger points, these physical muscle knots in your body right now that you're not aware of that are limiting you and you can do something that feels good to get rid of them and then you feel better. You don't need to spend any money to do that and you will be more productive. You will get more done. You will be a better lover. You will be a better friend. You will be a better person to yourself. It's a root cause. And those are the kinds of things you need to focus on. This may not sound relevant to you if you're trying to build some kind of business, but this is the kind of stuff you need to really learn and master if you want to find any kind of meaningful fulfillment from your life living from a computer, okay? All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I'm still working on the macro course. Um, I've recorded like two thirds of the content and this is like a really thorough course. Um, yeah, it's totally free. If you want to buy the program to follow along, then of course I have an affiliate link for that and I'll build that into the course, but you can just take the course for free. It teaches all the concepts. You don't even need to use the tool. Um, and I'm designing it to be like, there's a lot of demand for macros. Every single macro video I've ever made on multiple channels, even channels that nobody knows about, they've all gotten like loads of attention. Uh, the most viewed video I've ever made on this channel was a macro video I just made in 15 minutes in one take and didn't even like know much about it myself. There's a lot of demand for this. So I'm making a product and I'm doing everything I can to just make it purely useful and free and available on YouTube. And it's taking time and it's going to, I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm not rushing this. I'm also not going to say when it'll be out. Um, if you want to check out some of the notes, of what kind of things I'm teaching, then you can look in the community post on this YouTube channel and you can see a photo. I actually do a lot of like handwritten notes. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Th this is gonna be really useful. For you, those of you who care about macros, this, this will teach you how to make macros for free. You'll be able to watch it and refer to it and feel comfortable with them. Okay. You don't need to pay anything. You don't even need to use the tool. But you'll be able to explain macros to people. You'll be able to see why people use them and understand how they can make you a really next level computer user. Okay? All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.